Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am in my theater room and I want to go over the web interface and how to set up the monolith HTP1 with the use of an iPad. So I have been using the HTP1 for about a month now and I absolutely love this processor. Previously I was using the Denon 6300H and it sounded very good, however, this processor is a big upgrade. Since we have a lot to cover today, I just wanted to focus on the setup of the HTP1 and its web interface. I will do a review of the processor in another video. We'll start right after the intro. to the internet with the use of Wi-Fi or with the use of a LAN port. And in this one, I'm, I'm using a LAN port right now. Once it is connected to the internet, you can open your web browser. And this is my web browser on the iPad. And you just type in the uh, IP address. And this is the home screen that you are presented with. So as you can see in the home screen, the um, left top corner is indicating your input. And I listed this HDMI port as my REW because this port is mainly for me to use to configure the HTV1 with REW. Right on the bottom of the REW, it tells you the audio input. And with this iPad, it's the standard audio input. It is PCM uh, at 2.0.0. And if you look right across to the right-hand side, that is the information where it displays the audio output for you. And for my listening uh, format right now, the audio output is 2.1.0. In the middle, of course, is the volume and you can change the volume up and down by just on your iPad. And right underneath the volume, you have the input select. And you can name these input select and I will go over uh, these input select uh, in, the next, in the next few screens here. Um, right underneath there, there's the up mixing selects in which you get uh, direct, native, Dolby surround, VTS, X, or 3D. Um, so the rec is mainly for your two channel source. So when you are playing stereo for your music, two channel source, if you want the rec, there won't be any coloration to the sound of your music. It'll pass straight through the HTP1 and into your front left and right speaker. The native is mainly for surround input that is not Dolby Atmos or VTSX, in which it just passed the native multi-channel input through to the speaker. I pretty much never use the native. And then the next one is Dolby Surround, in which if you have if your source is a Dolby Atmos, uh, then of course that's going to automatically select for you for Dolby Atmos. If your source is DTSX, it'll automatically select for you for DTSX. And then you have your Oral 3D um, in which you can upmix any of your music to Oral 3D. And we'll go over more of those in detail uh, in a few minutes. And the last part is the modes in which you have uh, the night mode on and off in which it'll cut down your bass volume for you and you can still clearly hear the dialogue in which in my theater room, I never use the night mode. Uh, I have direct on right now. You can turn direct on and off. And direct is a very powerful program to configure your speakers and I, I really like the rack and probably I will do another video to go over how I set up my direct light uh, 3.0. The next one is your loudness on and off mode and then your dialogue enhanced mode. Uh, 
both of those I hardly ever use. Uh, I think once you set up your root correctly, um, you should not have to do much with the dialogue in hence mode. Uh, and there's plenty of videos on the internet that talks about dialogue enhancement. If, if you're not hearing the dialogue very well from your center channel, then, then either you need to reconfigure your speakers or you need to do root treatment to, um, to fix that. So let's go back to the top right of the screen in which you have the uh, setup button. So I'm gonna go over the main thing is I'm gonna spend most of the time in the setup function. So this is a beautiful display of the system configuration and the first tab on the system configuration is the speaker layout. And you can see you have the toggle for your speaker layout on the left hand side and a schematic display of your speaker on the right hand side. You cannot turn on and off of your left and right speaker, those are always turned on. So uh, when you want to configure your subwoofer and integrating your left and right speaker, the, the only way for me to get around that, where I set up my subwoofer uh, ahead of time with the use of the mini DSP, what I did was I turned off the amplifier to my left and right speaker so that I can just configure the subwoofer first. And then once that is set up, I turn the amplifier back on and that will turn on the left and right speaker so I can integrate my main channel to my subwoofer. I kind of wish that uh, HTP1 would allow you to turn on and off the left and the right subwoofer, that would be great. But that's a minor point. You can see right next to it is your crossover in which uh, you you can set the crossover if you set the speakers to small. Uh, I pretty much set all my speakers to small so I can um, control the bass and the crossover of each one. So uh, to make it simple, I set everything to 80 hertz for crossover. So the center speaker, you can actually turn on and off. And when you turn off, you can see the center speaker disappear on the right hand side in the schematic and you can turn it back on. For subwoofer um, and only so, you can actually with with the HTP1 you can actually configure up to five subwoofers and you can actually individually set delays and volumes and align those subwoofer with the use of direct light and direct light base management. For right now, since I am using the uh, mini DSP, I only use one subwoofer output. So all of my subwoofer from two to five is turned off. So you can only see one subwoofer on my schematic. But you can turn all of these on if you like or off. All right, as you scroll down, these are the surround speaker layout. So you have your left and right surround um, that's turned on for me, left and right rear surround, which is also turned on for me. And then the, the really nice thing that I like about the HTP1 is the upper speaker channel in which you have a number of configuration that you can play around with uh, to get what you want. So in my system right now, I am running 7.4.4 in which I have seven floor speakers and I have um, four top speakers and four subs that is being controlled by the mini DSP. So I have my left and right top front speaker turn on and my left and right top rear speaker turn on. Um, you can turn on the middle speaker, but in order to turn on the middle speaker, you have to have the top and the rear speaker already turned on to be able to turn on the middle speaker, or else it won't allow you to turn on the top middle at all. And in future upgrade, I would like to add um, 
I would like to add a set of new speakers for my rear surround. So what I would do is I would activate my left and right rear height speakers so I can uh, run 9.4.6. Because the way my room is, uh, it's more of a rectangular side, it, it will be hard for me to mount six top speakers to run front, middle, and rear. What I'm planning to do is to run front, middle, and the nice thing that would allow me to do in this system configuration is to run left and right rear height. So I'm gonna run top front, top middle, and rear height instead of uh, top rear. So let me turn those back again. So the next tab over is the uh, calibration tab and all of your calibrations should be done through direct room correction. Um, so that's what I did. And the really nice thing about the HTP one is that you can load six different direct filters so that you can have one for different situation of listening. So I, I'm only using three filters right now. I use one for, uh, for movie, in which you can see uh, mainly for for that is solo movie watching. That's when I'm in the theater room by myself, uh, watching a movie by myself. So it's it's a very focused um, filter. So it's only one seat and I don't move my head much at all. So you can see the rack pretty much um, did all of the calibrations for the delays, uh, for the volumes, I the only thing that I changed is the volume of my subwoofer, which I boosted up by four decibel as to what direct is recommended. And the next filter over that I use is for music listening, and with music listening, I run the bass uh, a little bit lower because I don't like a whole lot of bass when listening to music and that is for solo music listening. And then the next tab over that I use is for family uh, movie night, in which is it's more of a wide dispersion of, um, of seats. So direct calculate all of that uh, into considerations. You have to do a whole lot more Calibrations with the uh, fam uh, for the family movie, and that's done through direct. And then I have three other filters that are unused. I mean, I mainly use them to test out certain situation with direct to see which one will give me a better curve and which one would sound better. So I use those three filters just to play around with that rack, but mainly those are not in use. The main one that I use is mainly the solo, the solo movie watching the most. The next tab over is the PEQ parametric uh, equalization filter. And this is pretty much my favorite of the system configuration because it allows you to have eight bands of PEQ for each of your speakers. And the way my room is set up, the biggest problem I have when I was doing subwoofer iterations and my main, integrating it with my main speakers is that I, um, it was, I had a dip at the 100 hertz. So I used the PQ and did some boosting for my 
front left and front right speaker, as you can see, and I, I mainly got it to, to the way I want it by boosting the frequency at 115 hertz for both of those speakers, and I boosted up by six, um, by six dB. Other than that, all of the other speakers, I pretty much left it alone as the way that I configure it. But here you can see uh, the nice thing is uh, you can actually do more if you want to. Um, and let me go back. Uh, my front left and front right speaker, I pretty much use two bands of P and Q. Uh, I also did some boosting for my left and my right front at also at 159 to 160 uh, hoods. So there was a little bit of a dip right there in my room. So I, I was able to boost that up with P and Q and get it to be a more of a flat response. So that was really nice. But that's pretty much what I did with the uh, PQ. I guess I can fine tune and do much more with each individual speakers. And, and I may go back and, um, and play around with that and see if it makes any huge difference at all. But pretty much my response was pretty well. So I left it the way it is, except for the when I integrate the subwoofer with my mains, uh, front left and right. That's when I had a little bit of a dip on those two uh, spots at the 100 hertz and at the 160 hertz. So the next tap, uh, tap over is the input select. So the HTP1 has um, eight HDMI input in which you can label them as you like. I pretty much use only the first three HDMI and I plug in for my Apple TV, my Panasonic UB9000 and a karaoke system for the wife. And then for my HDMI uh, slot number eight, I mainly leave that open and I use that to connect to my laptop or my iPad. Uh, to use for uh, REW. There are two analogs input for the system. One is, I use that for my turntable, the ProCheck uh, RPM1, and the next analog that I use is for my Blue Sound Node uh, music streamer. I pretty much don't use anything for coaxial or optical, but you have three coaxial input, three optical input, and these are used separately, so you don't have to choose to use one or the other. You can pretty much hook up all three coaxial and all three optical all at the same time. And then um, the other nice thing about this processor is it has come with uh, Rune ready, and it is a Rune endpoint, and I, I do use Rune, but since I have the Blue Sound node, I decided to use Rune through my Blue Sound instead of using Rune straight from the uh, HTP1. But for those who don't have a music streamer, you don't really need a music streamer for this processor. You can just use Rune and and control through the Rune app on your iPad or your phone. There's a USB audio. I don't think the uh, USB audio input is working at this point, but I may be wrong. But they pretty much said that it will be available for you to hook up your hard drive or any, uh, any uh, computer or device that use USB for you to play your audio file directly through the USB. And the last one is the Bluetooth, in which I have that turned on so I can stream if I want to for music from my iPad or iPhone uh, through Bluetooth, but I probably 
Uh, we use that since I have the moon sound uh, note two I. The next tab over is the sound enhancement uh, and up mixing. So if you take a look, we talk about direct for two channel and native for uh, surround input. That is not Dolby Atmos or DTSX. And then if you go down, you have the up mixing for Dolby surround. And as you can see, looking through on the right hand side is that you have this uh, center spread. And this is, has to be my favorite uh, way to listen to two channel audios if, uh, from the HTP1 because the center spread is just really, really good. And for those who are buying the new Denon's, uh, as you may already aware that Denon is uh, no longer support the center spread at this time. Uh, however, all of the Denon I have in my home uh, still has the center spread right now. But what I can say is when you compare the center spread on the Denon's to the one that uh, on the HP one, the center spread on the HP one P one is much much more superior. It, it just sound amazing uh, for the center spread. So that is my favorite way of listening to two-channel music at this time. It actually sounds so much better than just uh, running stereo on this system. The next one down you see is uh, DTS Neuro X. It's an up mixing for DTS. Um, and it has a feature called the Y Sync in which uh, Eventually, I will upgrade to to have my front Y. So that is a function that I'm looking forward to use. And from what I heard, uh, it sounds really good in which it spread the sounds of your front left and right to, uh, to your front Y speakers. So you have more of uh, a surround sound effect when you're running your front Y speakers. So I can turn that on and off since I don't have any front Y running right now. I'm leaving that off, but hopefully I can upgrade in the next few months and run uh, front Y with it. And I think if you run the way it is with the, uh, the Y synth, uh, pretty much it make it sounds like you are running the DTS X Pro, but um, that's from what I read online, but I haven't, since I was not able to try it out, I will be interested to see how it sounds. And then the next down is your Oral 3D, in which you can do up mixing for Oral 3Ds, and there's a couple different uh, Oromatic preset that you can do, uh, small, medium, large, movie, speech, I'm setting at medium at the default for the aromatic strength of 13. I think that was the recommended on an audible online, so I'm leaving it the way it is and not uh, mess around too much with it. A lot of people talk about how Aura 3D sound really good with music. I have tried both and I prefer using the Dolby surround up mixing with center spread. It just sounds much better to me uh, with a wider sound stage, much wider sound stage than using Oral 3D. So I haven't used much of Oral 3D at all. And then at the bottom of the screen, you can see reinforced bass on and off. So this is a really nice feature. If you set any of your speaker to large on the speaker configuration, when you do reinforce bass on, uh, you are sending the LFE signal to those uh, speakers also, beside your subs. So that's really nice for, for people who uh, don't have a lot of subs in the system and they want to um, run some of those bass to their uh, front stage or through their 
from left and right speakers. They can turn those speakers to large and then do uh, bass reinforcement. Since I'm running for subwoofer right now, I always turn the uh, bass reinforcement off because there's no need for me to turn that on. The next tab is for your um, internet setup. But on the top of the screen, you have the uh, CEC. Since this is my theater room, I'm running a projector, not a TV. Uh, and I don't want to accidentally trigger the Apple TV to turn all of my system on in the theater room where I may not notice it for uh, days on, so I, I turn the, C, the CEC off. But as you can see, if you connect this to a TV, you can turn the CEC on so that it can uh, control your power key, your volume, your system audio input, um, and standby mode, um, but my, my biggest fear is not knowing my system was accidentally turned on and that can cause a lot of heat to my amplifiers, not to mention it will turn on my uh, projector too, and that can be running and, and using up the light bulb without me knowing, so uh, for all intent and purposes, I just leave the CEC on, so, so I'm using my universal remote control to turn it, the whole system on if I need to. So there's no need to, for me to use uh, CEC at the moment. So as you go on down, uh, as I mentioned before, there's two ways to connect to the internet, either through the ethernet port, in which I'm doing right now. And uh, some people online say that you have to uh, turn off the DHCP and use a, a dedicated IP address to, for this to connect reliably to the internet and for you to control it with your uh, computer or your iPad. I never had that problem at all. Um, I, I, I don't use static IP address, so I, I, I keep the DHCP on and not use a static IP address and I never had any problem connecting uh, to the internet at all. Um, so I leave it the way it is uh, without any problem. I, um, I turn the Wi-Fi off since I'm using uh, the landline for that. So I keep my Wi-Fi off, but I have tested the Wi-Fi and it works completely fine without any problem. And also with that, I, I did not have to use static IP at all and it worked just fine without any problem. The next tab is mainly the system information um, in which you have the power button. And so with the HTP1, you have the option to do uh, fast startup uh, in, or, or you can do the regular startup in which it takes about one minute for it to boot up. Of course, the fast startup will, uh, will consume more power but I leave that on at the, uh, the fast startup. And I set my, when I turn on my system, I set the volume to negative 20. And the nice thing is, um, Direct actually configured your system so when, when it's at zero, it's actually at reference level, supposed to be at 75 dB. So usually for normal, Listening for me, I use anywhere from negative 10 to negative 15. So setting at negative 20 is, uh, is where I usually like when I power on so that it's not too loud from the get-go. And then the next one down, you have the control of the brightness of your front panel. And so you can change the brightness of your panel. And the other thing too is that you can uh, save all of your configurations of the whole entire system onto a file any way you like. And at the bottom of the screen, you have control of the display status on your home screen if you like. You can turn on and off for the audio status and for um, advanced input setting. 
I don't really mess much with the enable support tools uh, unless uh, you call in to Monoprice and, and asking for help and they'll probably will ask you to turn that on so they can look up look at the status of your system but I don't have much experience with that so I just leave it off uh, for now and since I have zero problem from day one of setting up the system I have yet to have to call for technical support or call Monoprice for any issues at all. So I think that is the beauty of this processor is that it it works coming out of the box. As long as you know what you're doing, you're setting things up correctly, uh, it works really well uh, without any hiccups or any problem. Also at the top of the screen, one last thing I wanna point out is the video status. And you can also see the video status on the main screen too at the bottom of the screen. That's the nice thing, you can look on your iPad whenever you're watching a movie uh, or, or using any input, you can tell what video status you are on. Um, so with my iPad right now, you can see it is uh, seeing it as uh, 1080 at uh, 1080p at 60 hertz um, with four by four by four, but when I change it to a 4K, Blu-ray either through Apple TV or through my uh, Blu-ray player, the Panasonic Blu-ray player that will change to whatever status that video format comes in. So it's really nice you, you're able to see it right away on your iPad display uh, so you know that you are getting the picture quality that you're supposed to. So this is the detailed status information of the monolith. There's nothing really to do there unless you are doing a system upgrade. So that's the only thing that you use this tab for is to do an update of your system. And if you connect directly to the internet, the update usually is pretty fast. It does not take more than two minutes. It's the longest time it's taken it to power off and then power back on again and that took about a, a minute uh, max so the update it's, it's relatively pretty easy and then the next blue button over is the uh, information page in which I don't really use and then the next button over is to turn on or off the system so what I want to do is I want to turn off the system so you guys can see how long it took and then turn back on again. So it's telling me it's powering down, fast start is on, and the system is off. Now let me turn it back on again. And that's it. It literally takes about two seconds for it to power back on again. And let me go through the input select so that you see turning Apple TV, my Panasonic, go back to RDW again. So it takes a couple of seconds to go from one HDMI uh, select to another. So let me do it one more time. Uh, I'm gonna go to Apple TV and it switch over to Apple TV so you can see how long it takes. Sorry, my Apple TV is not on right now. So you won't see it, but I'm gonna switch from Apple TV to back to REW. So you can see how long it takes. So about five seconds or so, so relatively fast. So that's all I have for this video. I hope you enjoy it. I will probably do another video on setting up direct.
and also my final thoughts on the whole entire products itself. Thank you, enjoy your day. See you in the next video, bye-bye.